And we're going to go through and I'm going to show you how you can use all three of these equations to graph the equation on um, a coordinate plane. So starting with slope intercept form, what is slope intercept form? It's y equals mx plus b. And if you can take the equation we're given here and identify the slope and the y-intercept, you can take those two things to create the graph. What's in the spot for slope here? 1 over 4. So what's my rise? And what's my run? Okay, so my slope for this, m is equal to 1 over 4. And what's my b? What's in the place of the, the b? Negative 3. And that's always where we start, because that is a point on the graph. The B is the y-intercept, so it's where the line that we're going to be graphing crosses the y-axis. And this equation is telling us it crosses at negative 3. So we're going to go down and find negative 3 and put a point there. And then we're going to use the slope to find another point. We're going to rise up 1 and run across 4. And all we need are two points on a graph to be able to draw the line. We have point here and a point here. Is this a very steep graph? No. no. I think on this colored paper that it might show up better if we graph it with the highlighter. So I'm going to redraw my line. So that is a graph we created using slope-intercept form. We have the slope, we have the y-intercept, we can create the graph. Now we're going to do it with point-slope form. Okay, point-slope form is the one that is the most confusing looking. We have y. I'm having to talk too loud because there's some voices. y minus y sub 1 is equal to the slope times x minus the x sub 1. It's really important to remember that both of these points here in the formula have a negative. So when I look down here, there's two things I want to find. I want to find the slope, and I want to find an xy pair. The places I'm going to find those two things, here's where the slope is, because in our equation it's in front of the parentheses. Question? I'm going to point that out in just a moment. This is where the slope is, because in our equation it's just before the parentheses. And what is our slope in this case? Negative it's negative 2. And I can put it over the invisible one to show the rise and run if I want. In this equation, this is showing these two, because we put that sub 1 there, those are the places in this equation where we're going to get our xy pair. So in this case, my x is in this place right here, because up here it's there. But remember, in the formula, it's a negative x. This is a positive x. That means it must have been negative. And I want you to think about why. If the equation has a negative, then this number must have also had a negative to end up becoming a positive. So my x is negative 1. The y is negative 3. And the equation has a negative, And this is still a negative. So in the pair, this must be a positive. It's one of the reasons it's my least favorite. Do you see how people can mess that up easily? Okay. <clears throat> so now that we have an xy pair and we have our slope, we can graph by putting this xy pair on the graph first. Negative 1 and positive 3. 
and then my slope is negative 2 over 1. So I'm going to drop down 2 and run across 1. How am I checking myself? It's a negative 2. Am I going to get a negative line here? Yeah. And all you need is those two points on your graph, and we can graph with it. And then we have standard form. What is standard form? AX plus BY equals C. <clears throat> to make this easier, with this example, let's change this 3x to a 4x. We're going to make this equation 4x minus 2y equals 8. When we have um, equations that are in standard form, and I believe you guys went over this with Mrs. Forsyth last week, you can plug a 0 in for the x. What would 4 times 0 be? 0. And that leaves us with negative 2y is equal to 8. I like to take an even shorter cut to that. If I'm going to plug in a zero, I can just cover this up because as soon as I plug a zero in there, it's going to go away. And if I cover this up, I get negative 2y equals 8. What would I do next? Divide by negative 2. Divide by negative 2. So my y intercept is negative 4. And if I cover up the y, I'm going to get the x. I've got 4x is equal to 8. That means my x-intercept is 2. Now I want you to think about what that means when we're doing that as far as ordered pairs. I've got an xy pair for this and an xy pair for this. When I covered this up, I was basically putting a 0 in for the x. And what I ended up with for the y was negative 4. When I cover up the negative 2y, I put a 0 in for the y. y. So in this ordered pair, I have a 0 here, and I get a 2 for the x. Now, you don't need to write the ordered pairs, but I think it makes it really clear that when we're doing that cover up method, we're substituting a 0 in for each variable to get the other answer. So if my x-intercept is 2, it's going to cross the line there. And my y-intercept is <coughs> negative 4. It's going to cross the line there. And then you can double check, does that make sense with my ordered pairs? 2 comma 0? Yeah. 0 comma negative 4? That makes sense. And then I can graph my line. So I'm aware we're